Throughout Essex, many villagers believe that their older pubs and churches are visited by strange apparitions and ghostly figures. Could these be the restless spirits of former occupants, or are they just a figment of fertile imaginations? You might think that those initiated into ecclesiastical orders would have a better understanding of the afterlife, but many stories are still told of old churches and rectories in Essex being visited by the restless souls of nuns and monks. According to one legend, a monk is believed to walk through the grounds of Priory Park in the Essex seaside town of South End. While at the Church of the Holy Cross in Basildon, a monk in a red robe has completely different. Throughout Essex, many villagers believe that their older pubs and churches are visited by strange apparitions and ghostly figures. Could these be the restless spirits of former occupants, or are they just a figment of fertile imaginations? You might think that those initiated into ecclesiastical orders would have a better understanding of the afterlife. But many stories are still told of old churches and rectories in Essex being visited by the restless souls of nuns and monks. According to one legend, a monk is believed to walk through the grounds of Priory Park in the Essex seaside town of South End. While at the Church of the Holy Cross in Basildon, a monk in a red robe has been reported by several local inhabitants. The most famous haunting of all is that of a nun calling herself Mari Lair. She's believed to have appeared several times walking through the grounds of the old church in the North Essex village of Borley. Borley Church stands on the Essex Suffolk borders and is believed to be the most haunted place in Britain. Visitors to the church still tell of an eerie cold and sadness and that of a strange female presence. Despite more recent attempts by church officials to discredit the story, Borley has for many years attracted ghost hunters and psychic researchers. Early investigators have found that cameras and electrical equipment mysteriously fail to operate at the site. Borley Rectory was a gloomy mansion built in 1863 and was home to the Reverend Henry Bull and later his son Harry, who lived there until 1927. Over the years, there have been an endless stream of strange happenings. Bells rang and voices answered. There were unexplained footsteps and tappings in the night. A phantom coach and horse drove through the grounds and several people have reported to have seen a shadowy figure of a nun walking through the garden. In 1929, psychic investigator Harry Price and his team were called in by the new rector, Eric Smith, hoping to dispose of the haunted house rumours once and for all. The researchers told of hearing bells and knockings. They saw objects fly through the air of their own accord and they experienced sharp drops in temperature. Price devoted many years to studying the house and concluded that the disturbances were caused by the spirit of a 14th century nun, murdered after an illicit love affair with a Borley monk. In one seance, an entity told Price that the rectory would burn to the ground, and ten years later, almost to the day, on February the 27th, 1939, that's precisely what happened. Through the flames could be seen the frail form of a nun. During another seance, an entity calling herself Mari Lair told Price how she had been murdered on May the 17th, 1667, and buried in the grounds. In 1943, excavations in the cellar uncovered a woman's skull. Was this the remains of the ill-fated nun? Local legends of ghosts and witches can still be heard today in almost every village in Essex. Our search for other haunted places in Essex has led us here to the St Anne's Castle pub near the Essex showground at Great Lees. According to local legend, a witch is buried at the crossroads at Boreham, some five miles away. 
Apparently, her grave was disturbed after the Second World War to make way for a new road leading to the local aerodrome. The stone was removed and placed here at the entrance to the pub car park. Local villagers still believe that this medieval inn is haunted. Could this be the witch whose faint cries have been heard by travellers? Or could it be the earthbound spirit of a child who is believed to have been murdered at the inn? Shirley, there's a local legend that the pub is haunted. When did you actually find out about it? Uh, when we went for an interview to the, for the pub, they told us it was cold, very cold, uh, haunted, and um, asked us if we'd still take it on. And we said we'd go and have a look. <laughs> and do you actually believe the legend? Uh, I've got mixed feelings, but uh, obviously different things what Peter's heard, yes. <laughs> now how, did the, how did the actual legend come about? Uh, it came about uh, as the locals told us, but uh, in the war, the, uh, the Americans came, they couldn't get through with the tanks, and they moved the, the, the stone and uh, some soil, and that apparently started things happening in the village. Now, you've recently taken over the tenancy here. Has anything strange happened to you? This couple of weeks, I was a bit scared to stop upstairs on my own. And uh, the only thing what's happened, one morning I was down in the bar with a customer, and uh, one of the pills buckles dropped off the shelf as though somebody had really smashed it on the floor. Mm. <laughs> Peter, the pub is actually very old. Do you plan to make any changes to it yourself? No, basically, not on the pub itself. Like I said before, it speaks for itself. So just leave it as it is. The character's here, so you don't have to alter anything at all. Now, you've recently taken over the tenancy here. Has anything strange happened to you? Uh, nothing really. I've uh, dog played up one night, and uh, I went up to see her. She's not normally like that. Um, I left the dog, calmed the dog down, left her, got to the landing, heard some knocking from what we call the witch's room. Uh, waited a little while, walked towards the room, it stopped. I walked towards the landing, I waited at least five minutes, I completely tapping all the time. I quickly went down to the room, opened the door, everything stopped, there was no one there. And I just thought, well, okay, fine, I know what I heard. I came down, I just got on with the job. I know I heard something, so. What about some of the customers? Have they told you any stories about the pub? Oh, yes, yeah, stories we hear from them. <laughs> yes, oh, they've told stories of seeing uh, some time ago, a long time ago, of a woman walking through the actual pub towards the ladies' toilets. Uh, it never came out. Um, I don't know if it was a landlord or a landlord walked in to check, and there was no one there at all. Down the church years ago when I was about 17. Well, what did you see? Well, it was like a, sh a monk's figure, you know, like a habit, do they call them? Yeah. Like a habit going across the bridge. I was coming towards it on my motorbike, and this thing came across the bridge in front of me, and I just sort of like got a bit worried and closed my eyes and just like, rode through it. A bit worrying, you know? Um, I don't know. I suppose there must be something in here. Some people spin things. Well, I haven't really seen everything, but yeah. I believe they're true. And what about the stone in the car park? Well, there used to be a big stone out there that everyone called the Witch's Stone. Yeah. And that went about... How long ago is it, Dan? What's that? About ten, ten, ten years ago. The real stone went about ten, eleven how, years how ago. How big was that? The real stone was <laughs> almost a metre by three quarters of so a metre. So a lot metre. bigger than the one that's there. Yeah. Where did and it that, go to? Don't know. Right, so where did that one come from? That was there as well. There was two stones. There was the one that they called the Witch's Stone, and there was the other small one. Coggershall, near Colchester, is one Essex village where ghost stories and legends are rife. One legend tells of a 16th century woodcutter named Robin, who carved a beautiful statue and called it the Angel of the Christmas Mysteries. Robin is believed to have hidden the statue in a nearby wood, and it has never been found. Robin's ghost has been reported near to a brook, known locally as Robin's Brook, and blows from his ghostly axe have been heard from a distance. It's not possible to verify all these stories, neither is it possible to list every haunted place in Essex.
However, ghost hunters would be well rewarded for their efforts by visits to Tilty Abbey near Thaxted. The King's Head on Onga High Street. The Swan Public House on Brentwood High Street. Or the ghostly procession of monks who are believed to walk through the grounds on Midsummer's Eve of this 12th century abbey at Beely near Malden. Or even Henham Rectory, which is believed to be haunted by an Elizabethan lady whose portrait hangs in the building. <laughs> 